Hey, hey, peacemakers, it's the Soul Coach coming at you with another episode. So sit back and let's find your peace of mind. Who is Jamila Anderson and what is Parker J's? So I am, first off, child of God, and I'm a mother, and I'm me. Like, I'm an entrepreneur, just focusing on, you know, trying to build my brand and leave a legacy for my family. And Parker J's is my brand that I created, and it's named behind my children, Parker and Jeremiah. All right, so how was your life growing up? It was it was normal, I guess you could say. Like, um, my dad took care of me most of my life, so that was a little different. I grew up with um, of the younger set of kids, but I'm the oldest of that set. So me and my little brother grew up just kind of enjoying life and being creative and just living. Um, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word natural hair? The first thing that comes to my mind is the natural hair police. I just, like, honestly, I just feel like people put so much pressure on people who have natural hair, and I feel like you should be able to do whatever you want to your hair. And I'm not a fan. I'm not the person who feels like, oh, because your hair is natural, you can't wear weaves, you can't wear wigs. No. Natural hair is what God has given you, what grows in your hair, I mean, your head, and whatever you choose to do with it, I say do it. So was your hair always natural? No, it wasn't. Most of my life, my hair has been natural, but I want to say I was in, like, elementary when my mom decided to relax my hair, and I kept up with it until I got to high school, and that's when I decided, you know, I'm tired of putting all these chemicals on my hair. I'm just going to let all this grow out and just see what happens. So I've been natural since consistently since 2006. Okay, so that's a pretty long time. So what are your hair goals for this year, 2019? This year, I want to grow my hair back to bra strap length. Um, when I had my daughter, my people know who had babies, the edges just, they were gone. So the last two years, I shaved off my hair, started over fresh, and I've just been using nothing but my products and patience to let it grow back. So now I want it back to bra strap length. Okay, so bra strap length is what you're aiming for this year. And you said you've been using your product, Parker J's. Um, so what sparked the need to create Parker J's? Um, owning my own project line has always been a dream of mine. But I think what really pushed me is uh, back in 09, my dad had cancer. So I started really looking into natural remedies and, you know, they were doing studies and telling us that, you know, you can get cancer from skincare, hair care products, different things that we use on the daily and we don't think that they affect our body. So that's what pushed me into more so looking at natural ways to preserve my hair or to maintain my hair. So that kind of pushed it. And then when I had my youngest child, that's when I really – push more because, you know, when you have a daughter and you want to do their hair, and I'm like, I don't want to put chemicals on my newborn baby's hair. So that was my push to start putting it out to the world. Like, I'm sure there's other moms out there who feel the same way. So that's pretty much it. Wow, that's really different because um, you don't really expect a mom to say, okay, well, I don't want to use chemicals on my baby's hair and because everybody's just like, oh, I'm just going to use what's in the store, what's coming for me. So while building your business, did you have everyone um, everyone supporting you? I know you say you were trying to um, get moms to stop using chemicals on their babies um, and just going through the experience with your father. How was your support around this time for your business? I'm going to be honest with you, I don't feel like I received a lot of support. I had, like, maybe five people in my corner, a couple of close friends, my dad, definitely my husband. Those are the main supporters I had. And even my dad was kind of like, mm, you sure you want to, you know, put yourself out there? But my husband was like, nope, you got to. Like, this is something you've been talking about. He sees me up all night researching and mixing concoctions. So that really pushed me to go and just ignore the people who are naysayers. 
And it's ironic because now that they see it doing well, they're like, oh, I always knew you could do it. And I'm like, mm, okay. But you know how that goes. Wow. So you you did have support and everything, but what was your motivation while creating your business? I know that with being an entrepreneur um, and still with you being a new mom at the time, it's like you had all these, maybe these doubts in your head about, like, what could go wrong. So what really kept you motivated during this time? Was it any books, podcasts, scriptures, like your daughter? What was it? I'm going to be honest with you. I think my family, like, I literally prayed about this. And I feel like everything just kept lining up. Like, you can't tell me it wasn't God because it would be things that came, people came seeking me. I didn't have to go out and look for things. So I was just like, I pray about it. And then I'm like, okay, God, you know, let me know what my next step is. An opportunity would come. Or somebody that I wouldn't feel like would give me a shot would give me that shot. And I just kept praying and leaving it in his hands. And I was like, at this point, I've come too far. I'm not going backwards. I got to do this for my family. At some point, I would like Parker J to be able to take care of my entire family, my great-grandchildren. So that's what pushed me to keep going. Wow. That's that's really crazy because, it's, like you said, the, there was signs from God and the fact that when you were doubting yourself and thinking that, okay, this might be a no, would really turn into a yes, It that's crazy. Like, I just don't understand why we have, like, these big dreams and the fact that, we kind of doubt ourselves because of just fearing the unknown when we have, like, good ideas. And you, like you said, you just kept praying and all everything kept lining up. So when you actually started creating your products, what does your product line consist of? When I first started, I used to make, like, little concoctions and mason jars and take them to work. And my coworkers would try them out. This is back in the day. And um, when I was teaching at this old school, all of my coworkers were like, oh, I love you here. What are you using? So I, you know, kept trying stuff like that and handing them out. And then one of my coworkers, she was like, I need something for moisture. So that's when I started, you know, doing even more research. That what, what else can I put in here to give our hair more moisture? So most of my products, 90% of my products focus on moisturizing you know, curly hair. And when I say curly, I mean anywhere from, you know, whatever the A's and the numbers are, all the way to 4D hair, okay? I want to moisturize everybody's hair. And then another thing that I uh, added to my products was growth because I know a lot of people do want length. You know, length isn't important to everybody, but, you know, they want that. So I try to find different herbs and old school ways that people used to use to grow their hair long and strong. So my products really consist of, a moisturizing hair growth type of situation, and it just basically promotes healthy hair. That's the main focus. If your hair is healthy, then that's all that matters. When you were creating your products, um, did you at the time have anything that enhanced hair already um, that was colored or that wants to be colored, or do you have products that offer this um, this actual um task, shall I say, for enhancing color hair? Yes, we have the Crazy Color Cream, and it's a seasonal product that we carry. Most of the time we carry it in the summer, so we will be relaunching it this June, so right now it's in the off season. But we, I particularly like to carry it in the holidays because that's usually when people can play with their hair color. You know, they're off, they don't have to worry about work or school, whatever the rules are, so Summertime, definitely be looking out for those crazy color creams with him and that. And they're washable, just kind of like a wax. You just put it on your hair. It helps define your curls, and it also gives you color. Okay, so it's like a two-in-one. Because I remember seeing you and your son with um, the different colors. I think you had purple, and I think he had blue or something. And I was like, okay, now... This looks like magic <laughs> because <laughs> how is this sticking in the hair? And two, 
I just want to know the logistics of it because I want to try it too. And with me being in the military, I'm like, okay, how am I going to get this out of my hair? Because I can't walk around with blue strands in my hair because I'll get in trouble. So this is definitely seems like the product that will, okay, I can put this in my hair on a Friday, knowing I have drill on a Saturday and just wash it out. So I I know that I will be using that this summer. <laughs> yes, please. So what are your favorite hair tricks for protecting your hair that has been colored? So I definitely believe in conditioning your hair. Um, I also have a little YouTube channel, so I show people how they can, you know, do different things using my products to help promote their hair growth. So I like to do the rice water concoction, but I mix it with Parker J's Magic Main Oil. So that way you get the protein from the rice, but you also get the oil that helps seal it in and give it that shine. The oil has stimulants in it to, to get your follicles going so you can have hair growth, you know, promote a lot of hair growth. So those are the types of things that I like to do for my hair tricks to get my hair to grow, as well as eat healthy sometimes. <laughs> and are all of your products made from natural ingredients? I know you, earlier you said um, that you were trying to find products that were made from um, all natural products, but I just wanted to cover this again for the listeners to make sure that all of your products are natural-based ingredients? Yes, all of them except for the crazy color creams. I do use pigment for that, but I get the pigment from my supplier is an organic company, so they try to find organic type of pigments to add. But, of course, you know, like your purples, your blues, sometimes you'll those are not 100% natural, but everything else is. So that's why I ask people to make sure you keep your containers filled in a nice, area that's, you know, kind of not out in the element, so that way you can have a longer shelf life. And I know um, that just from me um, seeing on your social media that your son used the um, colored hair wax, Um, so just for the other listeners um, and the peacemakers out there, can men and little boys use your products as well? Yes. Everything can be used. We have my dad, my brother, my husband, my brother-in-law, they all use the oil for their beards. So the oils are definitely great. Um, I have my son, my nephew, other people. I've even had men order the crazy color cream because men want to try color too, so I don't discriminate. It is for all people who have a texture of anything but straight hair. Um, People with straight hair do use my, like, conditioners and stuff like that as well, but, you know, I don't discriminate. Any and everybody can use my product. Yes, and I I can attest to that because that hibiscus, um, what is that hibiscus deep conditioner? Is that what it's called? Yes. Oh my God, that stuff smells so good. I was about to eat it. Like I was putting, <laughs> I was putting it in my hair, and it's just like it feels like whipped cream, and I just put it in my hair, and my curls were so deep find when I first used it and like I even use it like as a hair mask and leaving it overnight with um a shower cap on just to lock in that moisture and when I tell you when I rinse it out with that cold water the game is over with that game (laughs) is over with and I even um when I had in my braids and I was using um the hair oil um, that really helped too because, like, like you said, it stimulated my hair growth a lot. And I had full locks at the time when I first started using it. And when I tell you, I had so much new growth, it didn't make any sense. Like, it really looked like those were my dreads. And then I gave the rest of my hair oil to my friend, um, because her hair was falling out because of her braids and. Now her little spot, her little pet spot is back together. (laughs) Thank you. That's what I love to hear. Yes, ma'am. So where do you see yourself and your business in the next five years? 
I see myself taking over the hair industry, honestly. I see myself on hopefully the shelves of Sally's, Target, Walmart, where I can reach the masses and more people can try my products and just can continue sharing my gifts with the world. And just I want Parker J's to be 100% full round hair care. Like we have everything, your combs, your brushes, your capes, everything you need down to the products where it's a one-stop shop. So that's where I see myself in five years. Yeah, I definitely can um, attest to what you're saying about um, going to schools and not having people look like you. When I was younger, I went to Catholic school. Well, I went to um, a all-black Catholic school um, in kindergarten, and then first through third grade, I went to a predominantly white um, Catholic school, and they were both in the same city, but they were on two different sides of town. And the um, predominantly white um, Catholic school, I was one of three African-American people who went to the school. So it was pretty weird. Like, I was the only um, little black girl in my um, Girl Scout troop, and everybody else, like, wanted to pool parties or we went camping or something, I was the one who had to put on a cap. And everybody was like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with your hair? And this and this and this. And then, like, when I used to get my hair braided, like, my mom, okay, if if she listens to this episode, she's probably going to be like, why did you tell everybody I don't know how to do hair? (laughs) Okay, she doesn't know how to do hair. And she used to keep my hair braided all the time by my cousins and everybody used to just braid my hair. So I would go to school with a different hairstyle every two weeks. And so they're like, whoa, how did you get your hair like that? How did, yeah. It looks tight. Like, and it's just so, it's different growing up. Like, okay, this is normal to me. Everybody got their hair like this in my family or my cousins or my, my friends, like in my world. But, when I was around them growing up in, at school, it was just like, okay, people are looking at me different, like my hair and stuff. And then when I finally was able to get in a, a place where um, I was around other people who look like me um, after we moved back to my hometown in Savannah, when I was in um, fourth grade on up, I was like, okay, well, everybody knows how my hair looks and they can relate to me. So I really didn't have to think about people, like, like picking at my hair or noticing and trying to, like, analyze everything. And so, like, with my job, like, now um, the field that I work in is, like, I went to work one day with a wig on it and it was it had, like, blonde streaks. And it was a straight, it was, my hair was straight. And um, some of my white coworkers were like, oh, I really love your hair like that. Yeah, like, I like that style on you. But when I wear my natural hair, it's just like, okay, I get no compliments. So I'm like, um, I really don't know how to feel about that because I'm like, you guys only compliment me when I have my hair similar to somebody who is in your family, blonde mm-hmm. hair, straight. So um, it, it's pretty weird how people, some people react to how we wear our natural hair. And it can really, like, take a toll on some people depending on where you live, where you work, and just just the environment that you're in because you don't want to be that the black sheep of everybody around you. So what's the um what's your self care routine um that helps you um with your self love, like basically to increase your self love within? I'm gonna be honest with you. I turn everything off and I'm a big believer in like practicing what you preach and to go back to what we were just talking about real quick. You know, I teach, like I said, at a in an area that is predominantly white, but surprisingly my school is predominantly minority. But I do still see the difference between the little black girls noticing their hair different from other little girls. So I just really learned to love myself and turn everything off. 
And I tell my students all the time, don't look at social media as to what defines beauty or self-love or your value. And that's what I, tur- I I do it myself. I take breaks from social media because we don't realize it, but that stuff kind of gets in your mind and you start to, oh, well, I haven't done this yet in my life and I haven't done that. No, I just turn all the noise off and I just I just enjoy my family because that's how I get my mental space. Just That's how I keep my sanity. Like just turn off the world sometimes because if not, it just drives you crazy. Yeah, and I, I noticed um, an article, I, I believe it was maybe sometime this month or last month, um, they said that Instagram is thinking about doing a new update where you basically won't be able to see your likes or anything. <laughs> and that would be funny because a lot of people, like the self-doubt, I wonder, it might drive some people more insane not seeing the likes that they're getting, like, I don't know if it will really help things, but who knows? We'll see how that goes if that update does come out. So enough about Instagram. Tell us about any upcoming projects or events, um, contests, et cetera, that you might have going on, especially with Parker J's. So I plan on doing a few little shows and vendor events this summer. I will be going to the Shrine in Houston, Texas. So anybody in the area, I'll start going there this summer. Um, I think it's on the first and third Saturday of every month. And I just plan on starting to get myself more out there physically because I have more of an online presence. So, you know, going to different hair shows and getting out there. And I also want to do some giveaways because I want to, I'm coming out with some new products this summer. So if people are following me on my social media, then they'll be able to take advantage of these giveaways. And when we do giveaways, we give away full-size products. And set. Some people have won the entire line, so that's what I plan on doing coming up. Okay, so have you had any celebrity customers use your products? Um, I'm not sure if everyone follows her, but Happy Curl, Happy Girl, her name is Raina. That's a celebrity in my eyes. She actually tried my products, and she even posted a video on YouTube and everything about it. So. Shout out to her. I really appreciate her for, you know, giving me that opportunity. Okay, I definitely have to go check her out um, since she is a celebrity or influencer out there um, because I do need a little bit more tips on my curly hair. (laughs) So speaking of um, advice, um, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I just want to ask a few mental health questions um, that are around um, your industry, so um, dealing with beauty and everything, just to get your opinion. So do you think that natural um, people with natural hair experience more mental health problems due to stereotypes and stigmas that society inflicts on them? I definitely do. I, I feel like it depends on the environment you grow up in. I grew up going to predominantly white schools. So the issue I had was my self-esteem was always low because as a little girl, we didn't, I didn't have people who had hair like me growing up. So I always questioned, like, what's wrong with my hair? You know, my dad would pump me up, but you still, as a little girl, you're like, well, why does anybody else look like me? How can they can wear their hair like this and I can't? You know, so I definitely feel like that takes a toll on your mental. But with you know, over time, my confidence grew, and I learned to love myself for who God made me to be. And what else helped is I went to HBCU, Prairie View and University. So there, you know, seeing other people that look like me and rocking their curls and their natural hair and being so confident, it just really uplifted me. But once again, I work in a predominantly white job, and in that environment, to be honest with you, I don't get criticism from any of my white coworkers. If anything, they're amazed by my hair. It's actually the older black women who give me a hard time. So I feel like depending on your strength mentally, that could be hard on you. And stereotypes as well because I feel like you can't walk down the street with dreads without somebody looking. You know, like, and I love dreads, but there's people who stereotype, oh, you have dreads, you have to be this way. And I, I feel like that can put a toll on anybody's mental. Because that's not 
that's not what it is. Your hair doesn't define who you are as a person. And you have what you have, and you wear it the best that you can. So what are some misconceptions that you want to um, clear up with everybody about Parker J's? I do. I guess people think that, you know, Parker J's is this big-time company, and we just mass-produce products and, you know, all that. I just want to let people know this is a small business. So it is just me and my family. That is it. So, you know, be patient because some people... Let's take a break and hear a message from my sponsors. Hey, you. Why haven't you made your own podcast yet? Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's easy as one, two, three. I'm telling you, you can make money from your couch, on vacation, sleeping, awake, upside down, on the toilet. I mean, it's easy, easy as one, two, three. Go ahead and download the Anchor app and get started today. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, and that that is one thing about, um, well, that I can see that would be a problem when people are like, there's a high demand for your products and people aren't understanding, well, hey, if you want the products made with all the love and the attention that you want, you have to wait patiently um, because I can't do it all, like, by myself. And the fact, well, I can, I'm doing it all by myself. And the fact that I don't have um, a team or if I don't have a manufacturing company is just like, wow. Like, I know it's overwhelming. So <laughs> I, I can only imagine, like, how it feels to have people, like, demanding for the products. But I, I bet it can get a little frustrating. It can. So. Yeah. <clears throat> How um how is promoting natural hair and self care to others and yourself bring you peace of mind? It brings me peace of mind because I feel like as I try to be what I wanted or needed in my life as a little girl. So, like I said, because I teach, I'm able to, you know, just I try my best to encourage other little girls who look like me or could, you know, share the same things that I had to go through. I try to help people like that because I want you to have that peace of mind. Everything is going to be okay. We, as little kids, we worry and stress over all these little things, and when you grow up, they don't even matter. So to me, just treating people with the same respect I would want and trying to be, trying to do people the way I feel like God would want me to do them. So that's how it brings me peace of mind, knowing that I'm giving my all to do the right thing and uplift others and encourage others and to support other people with whatever they need help with. You know, I do like to, if I, if I, if I'm coming up, I want y'all to come up with me, you know, so that brings me peace of mind. We, we let people know seven to 10 days on all orders. And some people are like, well, when I go to Walmart, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I completely understand. But the difference between me and Walmart, I actually care what's going on in your hair. So I'm taking the time to make sure that everything is perfected before I send it to you. And that way, if there are any issues, you actually talk to a human being, not some telemarketer or some person that just gives you this robotic answer. You're going to get the real deal. So this is a full family experience, like, that's what I want to clarify. Let people know that we are not just another company out here just trying to make a ton of money. We want you to love what you're getting. Wow, that 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 is really nice, especially in the sense um, because a lot of people don't think that when they are doing something um, with promoting natural hair and stuff, you're actually teaching people and you're giving them information that they might have not known or you're enhancing their skills um, so that they can tell others. So I definitely um, appreciate you for teaching me a lot of the natural hair care tips that you've taught me from 
me watching your Instagram and seeing some of your videos on YouTube. So I just want to say thank you um, from a lot of the people that are probably listening that have used your products or the people who follow you who don't actually get to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Let's have some fun. Yay! What is your favorite protective style? Oh, like braids or either faux locks. Either one. That's my favorite. I don't have to comb my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do see you with box braids a lot. Yeah, I yes. noticed that. <laughs> yes. What is your favorite hair color? I love me with purple or either blonde. But that's with wigs. With my real hair, I like it black. And the blacker, the better. Okay. And that leads to my next question. Would you rather wear braids or a wig? I love the look of my wigs because I can change it up more. But I love the no maintenance of my braids. So I don't even know. Maybe maybe braids so I can get up and go. So braids, I'm going to go with braids. Okay. So if you were standing on an island and you could only take three styling products, um, I mean, styling tools or products, what would you take and why? I would take a wide two comb, a hair top, and some Parker J's Cocoa Cream. And I want the comb so I can detangle. I need the Parker J's Cocoa Cream to keep it detangled and soft. And I need my hair tie so I can put it in a bun. Yes, I can definitely agree with you on that because no one wants dry hair. No one wants matted hair, and if you're on the island, okay, it's all cute to have the little island girl vibes out there in the water and stuff, but you don't want your hair all in your face all the time. So mm-hmm. I definitely say you get extra brownie points with me because I would definitely choose the same thing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So what is your favorite hair care um, line besides Parker J's? Is it Myel Organics? I really like them. I think I like them because, well, first off, they have good products. And second, I really respect the owner and her hustle. Like, I, I've i watched what that's become, and I, I really look up to her, to Monique. So that would be my other favorite line outside of my own. <laughs> yes, I, I like their products as well. Um, I haven't been following her for a long time, but um, – only for like maybe I want to say a year or two, so I, I didn't see like the begin like her come up or anything. Um, but she has definitely expanded her product line, and it definitely has a lot of credibility in its quality over quantity. Um, because it it is expensive, but it's worth it because it does work. And I I say I think I only have. Right now, I only have the um, the heat protectant, and I use that on my hair, especially when I'm blowing it out, like right before I get braids, and it does not leave any heat damage, and it's lightweight. So, yeah, I definitely can attest to that. She has a really good line as well. So what are three fun facts about you that you didn't already mention in the podcast? Uh, I'm a painter. That's one thing. Um, I love music, and I'm really silly. Like once I get comfortable, like I'm probably the turn up friend. Everybody got like I am that friend. But that's once you get to know me. So those that's that's what I can think of right now. And I think just from me following you, I think don't you love Beyonce? I am like, I love Beyonce's music. I used to, as a kid, be obsessed with her, but now I have like a healthy, a healthy love for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I do go to every concert, I'm not going to lie. See, I, I think <laughs> I think I did see like on, um, when you posted something about um, the On The Run tour or something. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. I had yeah. the time of my life. So yeah. And it's so weird that like everyone around me is a Beyonce fan. My best friend is a Beyonce fan, and just other people I know love Beyonce. And I'm just over here like, I will not. <laughs> I like more of the the older Beyonce, like before, like when she was with Destiny Child, and right after um, she left Destiny Child. But not not the the modern day Destiny. I mean, I said Destiny Child, <laughs> Beyonce. I don't know why. I I love how I watch. I feel like she's growing up. That's why I think she'll always be relevant because her music grows with her. She's not still out here trying to cater to teenagers, and she's in her thirties. So I guess that's why I like her. Like you know, I'm growing up. I be feeling like, all right, I'm a my grown woman listening to Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So if you had one um, superpower, what would it be? I think it would be to heal. That's what I think it would be. I've watched a lot of people suffer with cancer and illnesses, and I wish that's one thing that, you know, weighs heavy on my heart. I hate watching people have to suffer. So if I could heal people, I wish I could, but I'm not Jesus. (laughs) So. Hey, you never know what Jesus gave you, and a part of him could be healing. So, I mean, just wait on people to come find me. I mean, if that's something you really want to do, and if you reveal it, then, hey, heal some people. <laughs> I wish. Maybe. So, what are your social media handles um, just so that everybody can be able to follow you and for giveaways, purchase products? What is your website um, as well as your email for business inquiries and collaboration? Okay, so my Instagram is at ParkerJS underscore. My Twitter is at ParkerJS Hair C. Um, Facebook, you can just search up Parker J's Hair Care. My website is parkerjshaircare.com. I'm on Pinterest at, at Parker J's Hair Care. And my email is pjshaircare at gmail.com. So any questions that you have, there's also a link to it on my website, and it comes directly to me. So when you ask a question, I'm going to answer it back. So, yeah. This is Jamila Anderson, founder and CEO of Parker Day Hair Care, and you're listening to Peace of Mind with the Soul Coach. Here's a new segment with Ariane Cotman. She is the owner of Ariane's artistry and she's going to be telling us a little bit about mental health um it's just little short snippets on things that she thinks is important that coincides with the episode so you'll be hearing from her for the rest of the month and yeah let's get into her segment Hey, peacemakers. My name is Ariane Cotman, and I have a podcast called Ariane Attacks Your Mental, where I discuss my personal experiences and thoughts with mental health. Today, I want to talk to you about self-care. Let's get into how you can improve quality time with yourself. Routines. Morning and evening routines are so important to find structure in your day and typically the most time that you have by yourself. Reward yourself. Buying clothes, food, going out to the movies, or an event. Take time off. Have you days. Take advantage of help. Mom, dad, friends, offering to take things off your plate. Get rest. Take a nap at work. Go to bed early. Gratitude. Thank God. Thank the universe. Reflect positively. Think about good things that happened in your day. Use positive language and self-talk. Do something you love. A hobby you don't get to do often. Pace yourself and set goals. Eat well. Exercise. Say no sometimes, say yes to you, get outside, organize, read a book, watch a program you love, drink water, try a new class, yoga, script writing, painting, poetry, photography, start your day with something pleasant, music, your favorite breakfast, 
Lastly, spruce up your pad. Get some new light fixtures, get a new plant, get some new pillows. Try these tips out and watch your life improve. Bye, guys. Hey, you guys. I just want to let you know, thank you for listening to my episode. And you can keep up with us on Instagram at your underscore peace of mind. Me on my personal page at the soul coach, coach with a K. And we're on Twitter at keep smiling POM. We're on YouTube at peace of mind with TSK. You can email me at your peace of mind 2016 at gmail.com. Um, let me see what else, what else, what else we got. You can find this episode located on Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, everywhere, YouTube on our channel because we do drop it on there. And yeah, be sure to rate, review, give this episode a hand clap, give it a thumbs up five stars, everything. Let us know what you want to hear, what episode, um, what features you want to hear on episodes, and let's keep it going. So, peacemakers, thank you for keeping this going, and hashtag keep smiling.